Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and as you can see, we are going to be assembling the Cromwell Cruiser tank for bolt action. Who is up here? Is what he's going to look like when he's all done. So I'm just going to go over the various things that I encountered as I was assembling it to make your assembly much easier. <laughs> Here we have our tank and our tools. So this is a plastic tank, so I have my hobby cutters, my hobby knife, and my extra thin plastic cement. I'm going to grab some other tools when I realize I'm missing them, but at the moment that is what I have. In this kit we've got our assembly guide, some damage counters, um, just a guide telling more about what bolt action is, and stuff like that. Um, we have packed by Marilla, she is so busy. We have decals for British armor, and then we've got our little card that tells us all the stats for the Cromwell, which I am putting in a plastic sleeve and a top loader so that it stays nice and safe. And now we're just going to get started on assembling. First, we're going to check out the sprues, make certain everything is okay, which of course it is. And I'm going to show you this uh, tank commander because I'm not going to be putting him there, he's got something on his nose, that's what that is. Anyway, I'm not going to be using him, so I'm just going to show you him what he looks like on the sprue. So, I'm following the guide to the letter. You can do so with this guide. There's uh, nothing wrong or inaccurate or all, all the numbers are correct, and you follow it um, one step after the other, and you will assemble the tank, no problem. Here I'm just cleaning all of the sprue bits off with my hobby cutter, and, uh, nothing was in a very difficult place to remove, so you won't have issues. This was actually a pretty straightforward tank to put together, um, because the track is two pieces. Well, each track is two pieces, um, which is a lot easier than putting tracks, like, I've put tracks together, like, or eight pieces or whichever. I mean the links. Also, the track has only one way of attaching to the wheels, so that is straightforward. If you accidentally try to attach the wrong piece, it's not going to fit. You can only fit it one way, which is great. Uh, whenever I'm gluing, I always put my glue on the piece that I'm holding and not the piece I'm bringing into place. I just find that makes it less messy. Um, when it comes to the plastic glue. And then I'm just holding the two tracks together. I found that I wanted to attach the top track before I wanted to attach the bottom track. It was just easier to find exactly where it went if you did top and then did bottom. And they attach pretty straightforwardly and any part, hard attachment I'll just cover up with mud. It's fine cover it with some kind of wear. Tracks weren't perfect. Um, one thing about plastic glue which I really like over super glue when dealing with plastic models of course is the fact that um, when you have pieces that have to go inside other pieces it's not necessarily going to fit but the plastic glue um, melts it just enough that you can fit it in and squeeze it in there without even having to bother to remove any extra flashing that might be there. Everything fit well, there was no warp in this model. The pieces do look like the pieces on the Cromwell, so you won't have a problem figuring out where everything goes, I assure you. When I'm assembling models, I like to take off multiple pieces all at the same time so that I can be in snipping mode and then cleaning mode without having to switch from one to the other so often. To not mix up the pieces I've removed, I place them directly onto their photo counterpart on the guard. The storage container on the back of the chassis has two holes, but one is larger than the other, so if you don't notice the slope of the container, you will notice that only one of the two pegs of the piece fits into the smaller holes on that back. Everything here fits only one way well, which is lovely. It is a tank that uh, I think someone new to assembling should be able to assemble it without issue. And this tank has multiple options for open hatches or closed hatches. I chose all my guys to be closed since they're, you know, in the middle of battle and don't feel like being shot down by machine guns. That's, that's just what I was going with. 
Uh, whether you want to or not is completely up to you. It's pretty straightforward. Even the assembly guides remind you of the options that you have as you're assembling it. There was no difficulty involved. I did find it a little, little bit strange. I don't know about you, that there were a corner hatch and an upward facing hatch on the same tank. The corner hatches were meant to replace the upper hatches, but whichever, you get to see the options that the Cromwell had. Also, though there are rules to tell you how you can use it with a six pounder gun or a 95 millimeter gun if you want to turn it into a centaur, neither of those guns are present. You are only getting the one 75 millimeter gun for this kit. Uh, you use every single piece. There are teeny weeny pieces, so if you um, accidentally drop one of those teeny weeny pieces, you're gonna have to go find it because there are no extras. So if you are going to be assembling this tank, I would suggest making certain you are assembling it on something that looks very different from gray so that you can find your teeny weeny pieces. If you do not drop one of these teeny weeny pieces at all, that is a feat. I definitely applaud you there because I did not. When you have small items to clean, you can use an assembly stand or an assembly handle to hold them for you. Anything instead of your own fingers. After I attached the front lights and was able to attach the bars guarding them, I realized that my model was missing one of the holes to attach the bar with. The hole was there, technically, but flashing had completely covered it up again. So I had to drill a hole through before I could continue building the model. If you aren't that familiar with drilling, this sort of thing would actually be an easy place to learn. A good drill keeps your drill bit secure, is comfortable to use, and can hold a variety of sized drill bits for your miniature assembling needs. Plastic is easy to drill, and if you are at all nervous, you have a lot of pieces of sprue for which you can practice first. If you need practice with plastic glue as well, use some of that sprue and just glue it together until you're satisfied with your control over your glue. I decided I wasn't going to add the optional hedge cutter, something that you would find on Cromwell's and Normandy, but as you can see, it would be an easy thing to add. I could even add it later if I wanted to change my mind. I'm quite certain I could tear off the two pieces that I put in place. As it stands, I'll probably use the hedge cutter as on a custom tank or truck or something. Somewhere. Or maybe I could put it on a rubble terrain piece. Actually, imagine you see a destroyed building and just the nose of a tank with this hedgerow cutter is the only thing sticking out of a building. The tank thought it could get through the building and it was right, but then the entire building collapsed on it and the crew had to evacuate and leave it behind. Gone on a tangent though. Back to assembly, shall we? I am taking my Cromwell to Normandy. It's going to have Normandy so camo and it has the normandy cowl on it you don't have to add the normandy cowl on the back if you don't want to if you want to make it an earlier cromwell um but the normandy cowl is there if you wanted to add it which is what i did this is an instance where a part of the turret armor doesn't fit well against the turret and i had to cut off an unwanted piece of plastic but most everything in the kit fits together nicely i only had to do that twice i did put a section on wrong uh, since I was looking at it upside down on the guide and I didn't notice until I was moving to attach the main gun that the machine gun was in the wrong place But thankfully I could tear that off and redo it and all was right as rain If you did need to tear something off one thing about plastic glue before it's completely sealed So while you're gluing it together you can use the plastic glue to remove what you accidentally glued on because the plastic glue melts the plastic itself, you can put plastic glue through a seam that you want to separate and it will do that and you'll be able to yank it off. It may create little strands of stuff, but you can smooth that away with more glue. The guide gives you the option of either gluing it so the gun could move up or down and though I initially went with that, since it was so loose, I decided instead to just glue it in place so I had a gun confidently pointing perpendicular to the ground instead. I only put a little glue in that area so I can change it later if I want to, but I'm pretty satisfied with this model just moving around horizontally. But it does have the ability to um, allow you to move the turret up and down. It was very loose, such that the gun just wanted to flop to the ground, so I didn't do it, but you can. When I added the main gun to the turret, I found that it was a little long to fit properly. There was a bit of a gap 
in between the two pieces of the gun, which is not natural for the tank, uh, for the gun to have. So I cut that down a bit uh, so that the gun will fit even more closely together. It may have been that there was just too much sprue left because the gun is actually attached to the sprue where I cut it off. Uh, but I'm just letting you know that you may need to shave down the base of the gun so it fits and makes the join line the least visible as possible. Uh, but for the most part, as I said, uh, this tank was straightforward to build. I like how it turned out. Let me know what you think of the models. There were a couple little details I think that might be missing from this tank. Um, but for the most part, you can easily tell that it is a Cromwell. The antenna are a bit thick for the ratio. Of course, they're a bit thick, so they're less likely to break off. He's pretty cute. I think it makes him look like he's got some ears. If you do not want the big antenna, it would be very straightforward to use that same drill and drill through the holes that don't quite go through the top where the antennas are and put in some wire. I was thinking of doing that when I attached it and was like, these, these guys are some really thick antenna, but I'm going to wait until it breaks off. Because given time, I'm sure it'll break off. And then, then I'll bother to change it to thin wire instead. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you had any questions about the Cromwell, um, anything that I forgot to mention in the video, let me know and uh, I will answer it as best I can. Of course, uh, someone else might even know as well in the comments or we're hoping to ask the same thing. So if you had any questions, be sure to let us know. If you had a particular camo in mind for Normandy for the British, be sure to let me know in the comments below and maybe I will choose that one. I'm not sure yet, so help me out. All right, I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Pew, pew. Pew, pew.